Hello again. Now last week I looked at Spoonerisms and the example I found was from the Times Saturday Jumbo of that week and in the same crossword was such a lovely clue that although I don't think I can explain it, it's not a particularly common methodology, I just had to look at it because it's so nicely done and I thought it was very very slick and sneaky and it was brilliant. So I will have a little look at that, see how it breaks down. Pudding is where you'll get tea in a manner of speaking. Six letters. Pudding is where you'll get tea in a manner of speaking. Now there's a lot going on here. There's an awful lot of clue. There's only six letters. And pretty much all of the tricks and things that I've talked about, the fairly standard pieces of functionality, are largely useless in this instance because it is a lateral leap. It's one of those clues that you just have to think your way into and somehow the word pops into your head and you're not really sure how you got there. There is a way of breaking it down normally when you say in a manner of speaking you think there might be a sounds like involved in this somehow. There's definitely going to be something that perhaps is misspelled from its usual um, construction. So that manner of speaking there is indicating something like that. As a definition you might be looking at manner of speaking, uh, you might be looking at pudding and there's no real way of telling apart from perhaps this. So pudding is, this could be your equals, this is how I sort of got into it, broke it down. I figured that this pudding is, pudding equals the rest of that. So I worked on looking for a word for pudding and I got a couple of letters in the clue and I started to sort of see a picture of the shape of the word and then I realized what the answer was and I'm not quite sure where it came from and as soon as I got it I realised why it was right, but I couldn't quite say that I walked through the clue to it. Afters. Afters being another word for pudding. I don't know if that's quite a regional thing. There might be some people who've never heard that word used for pudding at all. It's one of those things, food does tend to have a lot of very um, local sort of dialects. But afters is certainly a word I'm familiar with in use of pudding, dessert, etc. And the rest of the clue, where you'll get tea in a manner of speaking, this is where the sounds like is coming in, because what it means is not tea the meal, which is what's being suggested by the use of pudding and so on, it's very cleverly done. It means the letter T. Where do you get T? You get T after S in the alphabet. T comes after S. So pudding afters is where you'll get tea in a manner of speaking. So you get tea after S. Unbelievable. And uh, I absolutely love this. When I find it, when I got it, you know, I, I finally got there and I just thought, oh, that's, that's just devious. Because there's no way of thinking of sounds like here and synonyms there and trying to sort of break it up. But eventually you just have to go, Ah, it's more of that is much more of a riddle than an equation and they do sort of sit right on that boundary that one falls way more into the riddle end of the spectrum than the equation of the spectrum but I absolutely loved it and I just thought it was worth um, worth flagging up because as much as you may like to think there are a set of rules and you could tick them off if it's not this type of clue it's this type of clue setters seem to have an endless stock of tricks and things that will just keep you guessing and surprise you all the time, which is why Cribs Across is so great. But yes, you get T after S in a manner of speaking. Afters, genius. Happy solving.